right, super simple little technique to show you today. So this is a variation on the couching stitch. Couching stitch has been used in embroidery for many, many years. And there's some examples here on the screen of some hand couching. So I'm going to show you how to do it with machine. Much quicker, much easier than doing it by hand. So we're going to start with a strip of t-shirting fabric. Cut it about one and a half to, you can see my cutting's not so straight. I struggle when it comes to cutting t-shirting because it rolls up so much. Um, but you want a strip that's about one and a half centimeters wide. Um, so when you cut it, it'll look like this. And then the trick is to pull it. And then it rolls into a nice relay string. So instead of having to stitch strips of um, cotton together and then pull them through as one would with traditional couching embroidery, we're just going to use t-shirting as a little trick hack. So as you're pulling it through your fingers like that, you'll feel if there's any bits that are significantly wider than the rest of the fabric. If they are, you'd want to just unravel that piece and just trim out that little bit there that's... You want to trim out the little bit that's causing any lumps or bumps as you're pulling it through. Sorry, I thought I'd done this already. Okay, then um, for today's example, I'm just going to show you on a scrap piece of denim. You could, of course, do it on thinner fabric using a backing, um, backing fabric, some sort of stitch and tear, uh, in which case you want to use an embroidery hoop as well. But for today, just so I can show you very quickly this example, I'm just using a scrap of fabric. Okay, so unlike other free motion, well, other embroidery techniques that I've gone through, we are going to be using the functioning of the sewing machine. So we're going to put our feed dogs, those are the fabric guides underneath here, make sure those are engaged. So that's that zigzag stitch, it needs to be, sorry, the zigzag symbol at the back, that, yeah, it needs to be on. All right, so you need to be able to feel the little ridges here under where you'll be stitching. The best foot to use for this would be your satin stitch foot, as it's got the gap underneath. And it's also got a wide enough section here that allows the zigzag stitch. You do get a cording foot, but that, my one anyway, only allows me to do straight stitch on the cording. You will need to set your machine to zigzag stitch. Your length, um, that's the distance of the zigzag. That's up to you. I like to set mine quite wide, like a three and a half. So that way there's a lot of space between the zigzag stitches. Your width. This you will adjust according to the thickness of the strip that you're stitching down. So I'm probably going to start mine in about a five. I do use my, manu my hand wheel at the side here just to see, just to make sure it's falling on either side. Tension. You want to start with slightly lower than normal. So start with about number three tension and your needle in the middle. The other thing you're going to need is a bit of straw or a piece of macaroni or something, something that can guide your t-shirting onto your fabric. So this is just a smoothie straw that I've had from before, that I've cut up into little pieces. I like to put, I like to put one piece at the top of my machine here, and one we, one piece here. That's this piece at the top is up to you if you've used that, um, but this piece here is pretty essential for for guiding the fabric as you're stitching it down. The other alternative would be to use 100 pins, which is quite time consuming. All right, let's get to the stitching. Okay, another little piece of advice would be, before you even thread it in, um, so I've cut mine from a straight section of t-shirting. If you've used tubular t-shirting, then you probably just want to cut those strips open so you can stitch them. But because mine is straight, is just an ordinary off a bolt of fabric, I need to cut this a little tiny hard bit here for the selvage. So I'm going to be cutting that off, but also I want to cut this beginning point at an angle like that. It just helps so when you get to the end, you can ease your two sides in neatly into each other, as opposed to having a double bulk of fabric. We'll, I'll show you when we get there. But for now, just cut your starting point the starting end into a point like that. Okay. If you want to join me on this um, example, so you want to have a straight stitch, straight line, sorry, and then just some curves. I used a lollipop stick to get mine. 
and then straight and then just do a point like that just so you can see the different ways of stitching this down okay. I'll do another circle where I'll show you how we join the ends together <clears throat> so as always holding our threads tightly under our finger Use the hand wheel to make sure that we're, our threads are going to be placed on either side. I've left that little point that we cut, I've left that, leaving that unstitched for now. Um, that will make more sense when I do the circle and show you how to join the two sides together. But just know that don't stitch over that initial point yet. Okay, so that's me as I've run the straight. Now I'm getting to the part where I need to turn. So I'm going to put my needle in on the side where I'm going to turn. So if this is the corner here, um, the needle goes on the inside of that and then you wrap okay, and then you lift your presser foot and turn your fabric like that. Guide that. So your needle is helping, is holding the fabric exactly where you want it. Then you don't have to worry. Okay difficult to see but my circle my little loop is there so we go to that point again on the inside of the curve lift turn so this is a gentle curve so we're going to do about two to three stitches going around the curve you can do it with a hand wheel or you can do it by using the foot pedal it's up to you okay so then that is my inside again on the inside of the curve. Turning more. Put that down. Okay, and now we're going to go down this straight. Okay, we're at our curve. Lift. Do. Stitches. All right, so on the third bend, we're coming back again. So I'm remembering at all times not to pull this. Um, I know it's stretchy and it's sort of tempting to pull it around corners and things. I'll show you in a minute why not. But just believe me when I say don't pull this any more than it has to. You just want to guide it. Okay, when you get to sharp curve, sharp corner, same thing. Needle on the inside of the curve, turn it. Guide the fabric along the line, or just strip along the line, should I say? And then strip. same thing here. Needle down, lift, sharp curve. careful of this because this can sometimes cause the, the t-shirting to pull so make sure your t-shirting doesn't do what mine just did and get caught in the foot there I just want to trim these off so I can show you how to restart or how to join beginning and end should I say restart. Just 
going to go freestyle here. Okay, so we're getting back to where we started. I'm just going to cut a bit of extra off here. Get that out of the way. Okay, so we want to join those two together. So we're going to cut this side in a point as well. And that just eases up the bulk of the two points joining together. Can maybe even cut a bit. Yeah, we'll cut a little bit more of that. Overlap those two and then continue to stitch. pull your threads to the back and do instead of going over your stitches many times and creating um, lots of threads and making it obvious the beginning and end pull your threads to the back tie yourself a little granny knot it's not as obvious we know where we joined them but it's not as obvious to everyone else where they were joined Right, so just to show you um, different examples. So with this one, so this was my very first attempt and I pulled in order to try So I cut my t-shirting strip a little bit too wide. And in order to counteract that, I tried to pull it because obviously when you pull it, it gets thinner. Resulted in my fabric buckling. So, as you can see, the fabric is not laying straight, it's buckled and it's pulling up into a loop, into a lump in the middle here. So that's from me not, that's from me pulling the t-shirting and creating that bulk. And then, just want to show you here, that's from, if you go over, if you do a straight cut and go over the ends, then um, backwards and forwards as one normally would to secure one's stitches, you're going to end up with a very obvious beginning and end. Versus the one we just did now, where we've cut our ends and overlapped them. It's not a serious buckle, but it's definitely not the kind of effect you want to have when you're stitching. And then, so yeah, just watch out for that. Don't pull your t-shirting when you stitch. And then I wanted to show you, so this one, this example I did with macrame uh, rope, or macrame, I think it's called in other countries. So it's... Um, 100% cotton, no stretch whatsoever, and it did work, so I tried different tensions, because what's happening is on the back, you actually get really cool ridges, like it, it forms a very textured work, so you know, maybe if you want to do like a tree, a tree trunk or something, it might come in super handy for that, um, and on the front, so this side fabric, sorry, and just to mention, this is just normal cotton twill. It's nothing. It's not thick. So it probably have different effects if the different if your fabric is background is thicker. But it did create quite a nice effect. And then on the front, it sort of almost blends in because the fabric at the back is coming around um, the cord like that. I tried different tensions. I did a three, a three and a half, and a four, and always the same, all with the same result. So I'm not sure that altering the top tension makes all that much difference to this. Um, but yeah, just to let you know that you can use cord, you could stitch down wool, crochet cottons, all sorts of things. You can just vary the distance of your zigzag and it creates a really nice effect. And that's that for today. I hope you enjoyed today's little technique video. As always, please like and subscribe and we'll see you soon for another exciting tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.